the flub was going on at the start of Raw? Because Kevin Patrick and Corey Graves were like, uh, hello, welcome to the show. <laughs> and I kid you not, this is what they said. We are going to have the Helians from Hades, the Judgment Day. We've got the cantankerous Kevin Owens and the spirited Sami Zayn. The menacing Gunther, Senor Money in the Bank, cheeky Chelsea Green. The self-angrandizing Sonya Deville. The strong-willed Raquel Rodriguez. And the bubbly Liv Morgan. And I'm sorry, go. Because hello, my friends, and welcome to the episode of Nobody Talks Like That. This week, featuring everybody on the WWE roster. Just imagine in real life, you had a bunch of friends. You had Bronco Brian, Sexy Steve, alienating Alan. What would happen is you'd be like, ha ha, I don't want these mates anymore because it's absolutely ridiculous. And you want to know why? because nobody talks like that. So hello, my friends, it is stupid Simon Miller here. That's right, we're going to take my finger, which is full of power, not a euphemism, and we are going to give the good bits up and the bad bits are down when it comes to last night's Raw. And aside from that ridiculous beginning, give you a little spoiler, this show rules. Because thankfully, we could forget about the over-nickname of Corey Graves because Cody Rhodes' music hit. We were in Atlanta, which is his hometown. <laughs> and everybody went nuts. The dude is just a super-duper megastar now, so here it was time 9,000. And even though he did his whole what do you want to talk about, is actually, you know what? There's no time for talking. I know you're back there, Brock Lesnar, so we're gonna fight. Of course, Brock didn't show, so Cody was like, well, look, I'll wait till 9 p.m., I'll wait till 10 p.m., I ain't going nowhere. I kind of wanted him to do this just to see what the ratings would do. Like, imagine they went up and up and up. We get to next week, and then we just re-rode, sat in the ring going, who wants a story? As he was waiting, he mentioned that his mother was in the crowd. He got really emotional about this when he confirmed that his catchphrase is, I don't want to get funky like a monkey. Maybe that's something that Dusty Rhodes used to say, and I forgot. But I tell you whose new catchphrase it is, mine. He also underlined that the reason he is a fighter these days is because of his mum when he said that his feud with Brock Lesnar is his hard times. So we were tying it in. The best bit is that as soon as Rhodes went to hug his mum, all of a sudden we got blah, 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 and Brock Lesnar's music hit. So he was backstage saying to the audio guy, look, don't push play until I see some kind of affection out there, because then I'll walk out and I'll kill someone. It actually improved because Lesnar still didn't show. So Cody Rhodes stormed to the back. This was the greatest walk I've ever seen. It's like when your mum has just been told you skip school. He's like, right, I'm going to tell him off. It was really quite creative too, because all of a sudden we just heard smash. It was the sound of a steel chair. When all of a sudden Cody came flying out the entranceway. And yeah, he totally failed at this. Brock Lesnar was about to absolutely kill him. And he had a steel chair. He also took Cody in front of his mother when he gave him an F5. So I was like, ha ha, Lesnar is totally nuts when he put him in the ring. And you already know what he did. He locked in the Kimura. So this is like your partner planning to break up with you, but first they say, hey, why don't you give your family a call? And eventually, of course, Brock looked at Cody Rhodes and says, you want to fight at SummerSlam? Well, that's what we'll do, bitch. Brock then smacked Cody one more time during the ad break because he is a massive asshole. But all of this ruled, even though we don't really know why they are having this feud, because they feel like such big stars. Oh, look. I'm pumped. I can't wait for this pay-per-view premium live event because on paper, it looks totally fabu. This was also a very hot start to Raw. Up. And the madness continued too because it was Gunther versus Matt Riddle. All right. Now it was odd because the ring general had taken on Riddle at Money in the Bank and he'd absolutely destroyed him. So why someone in the story, I presume Adam Pearce went, yeah, sure, Matthew, you want another go? I don't know. <laughs> But it happened again. Because Gunther did one of these chops that was so loud, it was like a gunshot. And then when Riddle came at him in the air, he just swatted him. I was like, man, this Gunther, he very well could be the best intercontinental champion ever. Riddle was able to hit an exploder to try and get back into this, but then he just got chopped some more when he was absolutely ruined by a German suplex. Athena's aid. It does get happening as well because Matt went for the floating bow, so Guther just got his knees up. Riddle went flying into them when he hit the pommer power. One, two, three. That was a bit like that kid from The Simpsons, like, stop, stop, he's already dead. Don't book it again, Adam Pearce. You're going to get this man killed. So it really was just one big man slapping man meat. And when we do get to SummerSlam, obviously we're going to do Drew versus Gunther, especially because after this, the ring general stood on Alan the announce table and he was like, oh, you can boo me all you want. And Drew, if you want to ride my coattails, you can, but you see what I did to your buddy? I'm going to do that to you too. So I kind of feel like McIntyre should be defeated and then go heel, but who the hell knows? And now the big question, of course, is should Gunther beat the Honky Tonk Man's Intercontinental title record reign? Now, 
obviously he should, but on the sillier side of things, no, he shouldn't, because I just love that we live in the world when the person that holds this record is a guy that decided, I know how I can be good at wrestling. I'll pretend to be Elvis. This was very good stuff though, and again, who doesn't want to see this match at the premium live event? He's getting it up. Jackie Redman was then interviewing Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan, because of course later on they're going to have a tag team title match. They are ready for Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville though, because they know they like to cheat. And once again, don't forget that Liv is bubbly, and Raquel is strong-willed. So what, if she starts smoking, she's really good at giving it up? I don't know what that means. Rhea Ripley then showed up, which was awesome. But once again, the tag team champions wouldn't back down. So Rhea was like, all right. She headbutted Liv Morgan. And when Rodriguez tried to attack her, Ripley was like, no. And she busted up her leg. So it was like, oh, what are we going to do? They're meant to be fighting later. So clearly we are going to be doing this at SummerSlam. And we should do because Raquel Rodriguez and Rhea Ripley have such good chemistry. And I just love the fact that whether you're in the main event or whether you're in the mid card, there are stories for days when it comes to Raw and SmackDown. And that's always when wrestling is at its best. So even though this was just like a two minute segment, I'm giving it an up because it made me interested in the rest of the show. This also led to the Judgment Day coming to the ring. <laughs> Kevin Patrick did it again. Because he said, oh, a sinister turn has now arrived. Because here come the villainous quartet. And I was like, what is this, a Disney film? It's so ridiculous. Rhea Ripley started this by saying she is unbeatable as champion. And soon Damien Priest and Finn Balor will also be able to see this. Because they're going to have gold around their waist. This is where they kind of looked at each other and I was like, Rhea, you shouldn't have said that. I think they're still on the same page. She also said that later on on NXT, Dominic Mysterio will become the North American champion. And look into my eyes. I love Wesley. He's turned that championship into something, well, important. But do I want the Contop to win? You bet your ass. That would rule. I mean, I would love it so much, like actual love, I'd ask it to marry me. What? And of course, this is when Dobby Boy tried to speak, but everyone went, boo, boo, you suck. So Damien Priest took the microphone, and he reminded us that he did have the briefcase, and everybody went, boo, boo, you suck. The Judgment Day are great. Finn actually did look at him at this point like, and you have to keep an eye on these things, but he also said that he's not done with Seth Rollins. And then when Dominic tried to help his mate, everybody was just jeering these guys. And they are now top tier talent. This is when Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens had clearly decided they had enough and they did interrupt. I was like, man, KO, what are you doing? You're going to be annoyed at yourself because nobody called you out and yet here you are. Their point though is that nobody paid their money to hear Dominic Mysterio talk. And in fact, only people paid the cash to watch Dommy Boy get his ass kicked which is what the tag team champions are going to do later. I like to think that there was one person in the crowd that was like, actually, now I came to hear the condom talk, so you can shut up. When Sami Zayn ended this by saying, we're going to shut you up for good. <laughs> so break it down. It's the crime counter. If I walk outside right now and I find someone on the street and I say, I'm going to shut you up for good, they'll be like, I'm ringing the police, because that is definitely a death threat. I mean, how else do you shut someone up from good? Rip out their tongue? Well, I tell you, that's also a crime. Goes up to 12. Priest then realized that given they already do have a tag match later, wouldn't be sweet if the tag team titles were on the line. This is when Sami Zayn accepted. Of course, Kevin Owens was so furious about this, but when he did get the microphone, he was like, you know what, we will do it. And I'm going to put my fist through Dominic's face. He was going to hit him with a Mortal Kombat fatality. It all ended when Priest raised the briefcase up again. and Kevin yelled at him, why are you doing that? This has nothing to do with anything right now. And that is it. Kevin Owens is genuinely one of my favorite wrestlers ever. He makes me laugh every single week, and he makes me feel warm and fuzzy in my tum-tum. This was all good. Up. We were then backstage with the trainer, Adam Pearce and Raquel Rodriguez. And even though the trainer was like, listen, we're going to have to get some scans, and Raquel was like, well, actually, I would still like to fight because when Liv Morgan got injured, we had to lose the tag team titles. Adam just went, well, <laughs> that's good enough for me. So what are you doing? I mean, this was pure pretend concern. You've just been told by a medical professional, I don't think she should wrestle. He was like, yeah, well, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm only joking. I like Adam Pearce. This was redonkulous. Of course, it was going to tie into the match as well. So once again, I like the narratives here. So it was Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville taking on Rodriguez and Morgan. And she ain't going to be bubbly anymore because they lost. Deville and Green were also going after Raquel's leg, which makes all the sense in the world because it was basically flashing red. And after they had chop block her, even the commentators are telling us, well, Liv, she's now got to go two on one. Mass. It was a really good near fall after Sonya had cast distraction and Green hit the unprettier. But this is basically what happened. Sonya then smashed her with a knee, 
Before that, Chelsea had hit a second unprettier, and the ref went one, and the ref went two, and the referee went three. Now, this only went five minutes, but that just kind of made it all the more surprising. And Sonia to fit the Chelsea Green. And now you're women's tag team champions. Clearly, this was a fix as well, because a bunch of fireworks went off. So I was like, well, somebody must have known. And the internet has melted down a bit about this, but here's the thing. Happiness is a strange emotion, because when it does overcome you, you feel happy, that stands to reason. And I think Chelsea Green and Sonia Deville are so good, and have just given and given and given, that the fact they did get a victory, and the fact that they are champions, I started cheering in my own house. So I told you before, it's very weird, because there's nobody else here. But it also ties in because Rhea Ripley has screwed over Raquel Rodriguez, so that ties into the pay-per-view premium live event. And look, I do get it. Sonya and Chelsea's win-loss record is appalling. So how they got here, I don't know. But if you don't get that with WWE by this stage, well, I don't think you've been paying attention. I just think they're a really good team, and I do hope we push them to the moon because they entertain me. That's why I'm going to give it a nap. And look, I know we're hot potatoing the titles, but that's better than them vanishing from TV. Over the last couple of years, that has happened a lot. Byron Saxon also tried to ruin this when he caught up with them. He was like, well, you only won because of Raquel Rodriguez's injury. And DeVille was like, what injury? That was definitely fake. Made me laugh. Chelsea then thanked everyone, including Janine, <laughs> from the talent salon. So you see why I'm into this goofy wrestling for life. Then got one of these amazing video packages that WWE just keep doing for the bloodline. I was like, oh man, I can't wait for Friday when we were doing a sit-down interview with Seth Rollins. Huh. Saxton was hosting, and thankfully he didn't do what he'd just done to the women's tag team champions when he mugged them off. But he did say, well, hello, Seth. You are the world heavyweight champion, so what's next? And then Goldberg turned up and said, don't steal my catchphrase. Didn't happen. Now, Rollins does want a marquee match at SummerSlam because of the title. And just when he started to reel off a bunch of names, Finn Balor walked in. He said, Byron, you better leave. I want to talk to this tamale. He wanted to make it clear that he's front of the line and he wants the match. And if he was Seth Rollins, which he's not, but if he was, he would go to Adam Pearce and he would get this official right now. Rollins felt like Finn should stop living in the past, but Balor was like, that's not what I'm doing. I'm living in chaos. And the only way I can move in from my life is if I beat you and I take your championship. So once again, you better get this done. Rollins then questioned why they had to do it over the belt and why don't they just have a fight so Balor should take his shot when Finn stood up. He was like, you know what? I don't need to deal with you. And then when he was out of a frame, he took a chair and he threw it into Seth Rollins' face. Well, like, yeah, that will make a statement. He then kicked his ass while screaming, I want to take you on at SummerSlam. This was like one of those segments you used to see on NXT Black and Gold back in the day with Finn Balor. I don't know why it's taken us so long to do this on the main roster. We are going to do it at the premium live event too. And honestly, there's like 194 directions you could go with this. I mean, you could have Finn win and then Damian Priest cashes in. Maybe he's successful. Maybe he's not successful. Either way, everybody would come out and roar and be like, well, this is just carnage. I very much enjoy this. And I like the fact once again, we have a prolonged feud. WWE doing this all over the place. Ah, the amazing commentary. <laughs> They continued, because I like Kevin Patrick. I think he gets a hard time. But he said, oh, now it's time for a match with no rules. It's Viking rules. It was on the floor. I couldn't breathe. That doesn't make any sense. It's two plus two equals potato. It got even weirder because Titus O'Neil was just on commentary. Corey Graves like, oh, what do you think about Viking Raiders and Viking rules matches? I was like, I don't know. When I faced them, it wasn't a Viking rules match. I love WWE. It never changed. It's the strangest show, but it puts a smile on my face. It also meant I felt like I'd accidentally consumed a bunch of drugs, but it was the Alpha Academy versus the Viking Raiders. And once again, it ties into story we've been doing over the last few weeks. And because it was Viking rules when there are no rules, somebody had beat a Viking ship. So it must have been Eric and Ivar and Valhalla. They came out before the show and they did some carpentry. Early on, Otis even shouted, get the table, so he knew what he was doing. But when Ivar did a springboard, which is incredible to begin with because he's massive, Otis caught him in midair and gave him a slam. I was like, man, that was fantastic. Ivar was also hitting moonsaults. So this was ridiculous when Chad Gable was in and you know the deal. He just does the best German suplexes ever. Oh, it's the best. Eric then broke that pin attempt up at the last second and the fans were loving this, as was I. Because all of a sudden I remembered, oh yeah, they're fighting because Valhalla stole Maxine Dupree's jacket. That's serious stuff. Gable then continued to prove how underrated he is because he was just busting suplexes out from nowhere. When Valhalla did get involved and Maxine saw this like, man, I can't believe you took my clothes and she hit a crossbody. And once again, the reaction to this, 
It was just so much fun. Remember too, that's perfectly allowed because it is a Viking rules match when there are no rules. When Chad Gable got the jacket, he put it on Maxine Dupree. So Valhalla just speared her through a table like that. This is manic. The Raiders also threw Gable into one of their makeshift shields. This is when Otis was back and everybody was going crazy for him. And he hit the caterpillar and just when he was going to hit the Vader bomb and get the one, two, three, it all went bad. Because Valhalla did stop him and he was so surprised about this. The Viking Raiders gave him a double bomb of power, which also looked very impressive, and they pinned him. And look, this should be the way. It's a Viking rules match, and they're Vikings. How would they ever go home to their elders? It's also their first victory in ages, and I get it. It's a slight shame that the Alpha Academy didn't win, because this crowd would have lost their minds. But once again, I was like, this is just fun stuff. I sat down to watch my entertainment program, and they're ticking my boxes, giving it up. When Shayna Baszler beat Nikki Cross in like 20 seconds. Huh. I mean, she literally won straight away when she sunk in the Kirafuda clutch. When Ronda Rousey teleported in, I was like, here we go. Now, for some reason, she was in the crowd, which made her look scared. And this kind of ties into the fact that I don't think WWE knows whether she's a heel or a face. And she was like, listen, Shayna, you're all like, man, you didn't pay your dues. Well, yes, I did. I won the Olympics. And yes, I did. I did it in the UFC. And then, look, I was thrown into the fire here in WWE. And I barely had any training, but I still outmatched you. Now look, that did have a certain poignancy to it. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that last bit. Baszler, of course, disagreed with all this and challenged Ronda right here, right now. But Rouse just sat back like, no, I don't think I am going to do it. But we shall fight at SummerSlam. And then she called her a bitch. I was like, man. I'm going to have to start a bitch counter. That was two on one show. This kind of does tie into the women's tag situation because it's just so nice that Shayna Baszler is getting her duel. Given that Ronda Rousey, I believe, is leaving after the hottest event of the summer, well, I would let Baszler win, and then you can ride that for months. So I do admit that it's all over the place, but I did enjoy the fact that Shayna was allowed to wreck someone, so I'm giving all of that an up. But I do have to give it down to the fact that poor Nikki Cross got absolutely wrecked. Also, what happened to the story with Candice DeRay? That's just vanished. And if you are going to do these squashes, why can't we just get local talent? We used to do that all of the time. Plus, it's cool if you are that local town. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm on Raw. Don't get it. Down. Ricochet was here afterwards, though. All right. He still thinks Logan Paul is a joke that lives in social media in 2023. And I was like, well, that is actually most people when you think about it. And look, any time Logan turns up for a fight, he runs away again, which is why next week he wants him to turn up and they can go face to face. He also wants to hurt his ego, and I don't know what that means, but look, the reason I enjoy all of this is that Ricochet has deserved a good old spot for a while, and now has he got it? Now, I do think Logan is gonna beat him at SummerSlam, so prepare yourself for that, but will he totally smash it? Yes, he will. When we went straight to Miz TV after this, and look, thank goodness for that, if Raw doesn't have an episode of Miz TV, the world may implode. We should all thank The Miz. He was super happy that he had beat Tommaso Ciampa because it means The Miz is back when he talked about the fact that he had participated in a celebrity golf tournament. So everything is coming up, Miz. But do you know who he took a shot at here? Pat McAfee. So I'm going to guess that's another match for SummerSlam. He then invited Becky Lynch to the ring where he just insulted her straight away. He was like, how does it feel to sit next to a winner? Because you keep losing all the time. Imagine that on Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, hey, Tom Hanks, you suck. He also questioned whether she'd lost the step, and man, Becky did not appreciate that. She went totally nuts, and she got right in his face and said, okay, sure, my win-loss record ain't great right now, but don't you dare say I lost a step. I'm walking all the time. Lynch then insulted his tiny balls, because you have to do that when the Miz is around, when she told Trish Stratton and Zoe Stark to get out here right now, because she knows how wrestling works, and let's not stand on ceremony here, Mr. Wayne. Let's continue to lose her mind and demand that Trish gave her a rematch, which is when Stratus mentioned Rue, which she shouldn't have done, because that's Becky Lynch's kit. When you bring family into the equation... Well, you just escalate anything. Trish was still like, well, I'm not going to give you a rematch because I've beaten you. Zoe Zark has beaten you. And right now, well, you're just a massive goober. Trish then wanted to thank you because she's obsessed with that, which is when Bex was like, oh, now I understand. The only reason you returned when you did return is because you knew I was at my weakest. You can't handle me when I'm at my strongest. Now, I have no idea how that ties in, but it does sound very cool. Well, I think Professor X must have got in Stratus's head because all of a sudden she was like, yeah, sure, you can have a rematch. But there are three stipulations. One, you have to beat Zoe Stark. And two, you have to get down on your knees and say thank you, Trish. And three, you have to get a tattoo that says thank you, Trish. I think those last two were real. They then jumped Lynch, because of course they did. But man, we were treating Becky like a badass here. Because not only did she take off Trish's face mask thing and just punch her in the face, but she put it on and she went smack. 
she head buttons Zoe Stark. Nah, I'm pretty sure this thing is made out of plastic, don't worry about it. Somewhere I bet a doctor was like, don't take that thing off, she needs it. But seriously, I think Trish Stratus' heel run has been so damn good. I like this view because once again, we're actually going week after week after week. It's also helping Zoe Stark. So how can you get mad at it? Getting it up. When Bronson Reed continued to be the MVP when it comes to WWE shenanigans. He's smashing it. I've also got egg on my face because we did go back to Shinsuke Nakamura versus Bronson Reed. After last week, I was like, Ugh. And yes, Hina has a nickname too. And clearly nobody could be bothered to come up with a good idea because he's big Bronson Reed. Great work, team. Once again, though, he was facing Shinsuke Nakamura, so we have another mid-card program, and these two just kicked each other's ass. I mean, this DVD that Reed hit was absolutely redonkulous, and when Shinsuke was going for the Kinsasha, he got cross instead. When, of course, Tommaso Ciampa turned up, he attacked Bronson. And look, it does make sense, even though it is silly willy, because what happened last week, Bronson screwed him over, so now we have another disqualification. He also tried to say sorry to Nakamura, which is the equivalent of walking up to someone and eating their dinner and then go, I apologize. Do you know what Nakamura did? He just smacked him right in the face. I was like, you damn right. Shinsuke was also so pissed off by this, he did an interview, and he was sick of everybody getting involved in his business. And I tell you, he was so fired up here, he was like the old Stone Cold. Sorry, the old Shinsuke Nakamura. What I think we've done here is gone, oh wait, Logan Paul needs an opponent for SummerSlam, well we could do Ricochet. So we've moved him out of this feud and we have plugged Tommaso Ciampa in. But again, at that premium live event, if you do Ciampa versus Reed versus Nakamura, we're all gonna have a good time. I promise you that. That's why I'm giving it up. Again, it just worked. Which was the same for our main event. I mean, this had it all. Because before we even started, Seth Rollins appeared from nowhere and he kicked the crap out of Finn Balor so they fought to the back. Then we had Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Damian Priest and Dominic Mysterio for the tag team titles. And you had an electric crowd. This was a wonderful roller coaster. Of course, our champions were kicking ass until Rhea Ripley cast a distraction. This is when Damian Priest grabbed Sami Zayn and he choke slammed him on the ring apron. And the ring apron. Hang on. Hello, my name is Simon Miller. And here is my haiku. When you shall wrestle, there's one thing you must fear more. The ring apron. Ouch. The Day of Judgment then whooped Sammy's ass for a while until he got the hot tag for Kevin Owens. Seriously, it's the hot tag in ages. The fans went absolutely bonkers, as did Kevin Owens. He was running all around the place. And we had senton, clotheslines, frog splashes, cannonballs. Owens was so damn good here. Once again, he's the best. He then got screwed because Mysterio came in there with a frog splash of his own, but Sami Zayn broke that up. When all of a sudden Sami Zayn got thrown out the ring, when fans started telling Dummy Boy that he sucks. Dude is smashing it. But then got another great false finish after a pop-up powerbomb when Damien Priest was doing Frankensteiners of all things, and we got a bunch of dive 2023 wrestling. This got so good, especially because Ripley just grabbed Kevin and threw him into Sim of the Still Steps. And when Sammy was like, ref, why can't you see this? Dom snuck up behind him him and hit the most devastating move in all the sports entertainment the surprise roll up and look he did kick out but that was great we couldn't handle the fact it didn't work so she kept trying to be an absolute interfering ian when Liv Morgan was here, and she tried to beat up Rhea, but that didn't work, so they spilled into Timmy the Timekeeper's area. It also means next week Morgan is going to be killed, and then we had this awesome sequence when everybody was running at everybody else, when all of a sudden Damian Priest got hit with the stunner, that allowed Sami Zayn to hit the Aluva kick on the condom, and he got the 1-2-3. They are still your tag team champions again. Everybody was so damn pleased the heroes had won. Massive round of applause, terrific tag team match. Up. So I just love the fact that Raw at the moment is situated around these guys and Cody Rhodes. Brock Lesnar, when he returns, it feels like a star. Look at these countless. I ain't even mad at it, man. You should watch this episode of Raw. It's so damn fun. Up. Now, of course, please do leave a comment below and let me know how wrong I am. And in fact, this Raw did suck. I mean, I do get it wrong all the time. When you can click the ups and downs on the screen for last week's WWE Smackdown. You can also like the video, share the video, and subscribe. And keep up to date with all the latest wrestling news at whatculture.com. You know the deal. Social media, WhatCulture, WWE, and Simon Miller 316. But most of all, I appreciate you stopping by. I've watched so much wrestling over the last few days. Even my back hurts. That's mostly because I wrestled two last week. It's like sports entertainment have thrown up over me. I'm totally good with that. Goodbye.